God. Father, I thank you, God. I worship you, God. I worship you, Father God. Uh, Psalms 145 says, I will exalt you, O my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Father God, we come before you, God, humbly before you, God asking you to forgive us for any wrongs we may have done. Lord God, Father, you drill down in our hearts, oh God, and create a new heart and a right spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, we glorify you and worship you, God. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am and the ancient of days. And oh God, God, all our praises go up to you. Tonight, I pray that you bless our worship, oh God. Bless every song, oh God. Father, that it will be a sweet-smelling aroma in your throne room. Each song that we sing here tonight. Bless the believers, oh God, as they come out tonight to worship and praise you. That we will all be in one accord, oh God. Hallelujah, and lifting you up and praising you, Father. God, I pray you bless the Apostle Raul as he teaches the word of God. Oh, my Savior, your word will never return void, but it will accomplish what you send it for. I pray that this word, God, as it goes out on the airways, oh God, on, on the different Oh, Lord Jesus, network on the Facebook, Spotify, whatever, Lord God, that this work goes out and heard of their Father, that believers would be drawn to you and they will hunger and thirst for righteousness when they hear the true word of God. Oh, Lord Jesus, they will work out their salvation with fear and trembling. As this word goes forth, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Bless and have your way now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name, O oh Lord. We worship your name. We glorify and we exalt your name, O oh Lord. Thank you once again, Lord, for gathering all of us here together, Lord, to praise and worship your name, for gathering your remnant, your brethren, Lord. Thank you for your presence, O oh Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord. We, ma we magnify your name. We glorify your name, Lord. Oh, Lord, as we praise and worship you, Lord, I pray that you be enthroned in the praises of your people. Lord, as we lift our hands up in worship, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we will lift up clean hands, Lord, and clean hearts and sanctified hearts tonight, Lord. If there is anything, Lord, in us which is not from you, Lord, I pray that you remove it tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. And tonight, fill us with more of your Holy Spirit, Lord. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray, Lord, as we praise and worship you, Lord, that we will keep everything aside, Lord, all thoughts aside, Lord, and only concentrate on you and worship you, Lord. And as your brethren, Lord, that we will together magnify your name, Lord. And together, Lord, praise you for your wonderful deeds, Lord. And praise you for who you are, the great I am, Lord. The further time I submit into your hands, Lord, be enthroned in the praises of your people. In the name of Jesus, I make this prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Down the mountains, the river flows. And it brings refreshing wherever it goes. 
through the valleys and over the fields. The river is rushing and the river is here. Down the mountains the river flows and it brings refreshing wherever it goes. Through the valleys and over the fields, the river is rushing and the river is here. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. The river of God is stimming with life. And all who touch it can be revived. And those who linger on this river show will come back thirsting for more of the Lord. The river of God is stimming with life, and all who touch it can be revived. And those who linger on this river show will come back thirsting for more of the Lord. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter, and we rejoice for the river is here. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter, and we rejoice for the river is here. Up to the mountains we love to go. To find the presence of the Lord. Along the banks of the river we run. We dance with laughter, giving praise to the sun. Up to the mountains we love to go. To find the presence of the Lord. Along the banks of the river we run. We dance with laughter, giving praise to the sun. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter, and we rejoice, for the river is here. Up to the mountains we love to go, find the presence of the Lord. Along the banks of the river we run, we dance with laughter, giving praise to the sun. Up to the mountains we love to go. To find the presence of the Lord. Along the banks of the river we run. We dance with laughter, giving praise to the sun. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice, for the river is here. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. Yes, we rejoice for the river is here. Yes, we rejoice for the river is here. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, O Lord, in your presence, Lord, there is fullness of joy, O Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength, Lord. Tonight, I pray, Lord, that each and everyone who is sitting here and will be joining this meet, Lord, you fill us with your joy tonight, Lord. Fill us with your joy, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that we will forget each and everything, Lord, and just enjoy your presence tonight and glorify your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
As David did in Jehovah's side, I will dance with all my mind. As David did in Jehovah's side, I will dance with all my mind before the King of Kings. Before the King of Kings. As Miriam did with the tambourine, I will clap my hands and sing. As Miriam did with the tambourine, I will clap my hands and sing before the King of Kings, before the King of Kings. As David did in Jehovah's side, I will dance with all my might. As David did in Jehovah's side, I will dance with all my might before the King of Kings. Before the King of Kings. As Miriam did with the tambourine, I will clap my hands and sing. As Miriam did with the tambourine, I will clap my hands and sing before the King of kings before the king of kings as judah did on the battleground we will make a joyful sound as judah did on the battleground we will make a joyful sound before the King of Kings. Before the King of the Kings. As Joshua did at Jericho, we will shout to defeat the foe. As Joshua did at Jericho, we will shout to defeat the foe before the King of Kings. Before the King of Kings. As Joshua did at Jericho, we will shout to defeat the foe. As Joshua did at Jericho, we will shout to defeat the foe before the King of Kings. Before the King of Kings. And we can come before Him and worship Him today. And we can now adore Him for Jesus made a way and we can come before Him and worship Him today and we can now adore him 
For Jesus made a way As David did in Jehovah's side I will dance with all my might As David did in Jehovah's side I will dance with all my might before the King of Kings, before the King of Kings, before the King of Kings. Before the King of Kings. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Lord, you, that you have not given us the spirit of shame or timidity, Lord. But help us, Lord, that you fill us, fill us with the spirit of boldness tonight, Lord. That we will declare your name, Lord. And we will always dance in your presence, Lord. And always declare of your mighty works and deeds, Lord. Not only in front of the congregation, Lord. But outside, Lord, wherever it is needed, Lord. That we will not be ashamed of your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And like these people, Lord, that we will trust in you, Lord. That if the Lord, our God, is with us, Lord, that no one can come against us, oh Lord. And there is always victory, Lord, in his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your name, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. As we gather in this place today, Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Have your way as we lay aside our own desires, sweep across our hearts with holy fire. Have your way, this is your house. Your home, we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home, we welcome you today. As we offer up our hearts and lives, let them be a living sacrifice. Oh, have your way. Be glorified in everything we do. Be glorified in everything we say. Oh, have your way. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. As we offer up our hearts and lives, let them be a living sacrifice. Oh, have your way. Be glorified in everything we do. Be glorified in everything we say. Oh, have your way. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house. 
your home we welcome you today and as we praise as we praise O Lord, draw near. It's your voice, it's your voice, Lord, we long to Him. Oh, we long to Him. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Lord, we welcome you today. Yes, we welcome you. Today, oh hallelujah, yes Lord, tonight we invite you, your Lord, in our lives, Lord, in our families, oh Lord, oh hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord, it's your voice, we long to your Lord, tonight, Lord, as we also enter into the time of word, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will speak to each and everyone tonight, Lord, that we will have a receiving heart, Lord, and an open heart, Lord, to receive your word tonight into our lives, O oh Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious drill, a lot to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, a lot to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus. Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my sins, my cross, my shame. Arising again, I'll bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Taking my sins, my cross, my shame. Arising again, I'll bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is 
Jesyane Jesus Lamb of God Worthy is your name Jesus Lamb of God Worthy is your name Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, worthy is your name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, worthy you are worthy to be praised, O Lord. The Lamb of God was slain for our sins, Lord. To, today, by your blood, we have been redeemed from each and every sickness from our sins, Lord. And we can stand here, we can sit here in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. To praise and worship your name, O Lord. We bless your holy name, O Lord. Take me past the outer courts into the holy place, past the brazen altar. Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people and the priests to sing your praise. Lord, I hunger and thirst for your righteousness. But it's only found in one place. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips. Here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips. Here I am. Take the gold, touch my lips. Here I am. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord Father. Here we are today, Lord. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Sanctify our minds, oh Lord, tonight that we can receive your word, Lord. That when we receive your word, Lord, that it will bear fruit in our heart, Lord. I pray for Apostle Rahul also as we speak, Lord, as he speaks, Lord, that you use him as your mouth mouthpiece, Lord. Lord, whatever you want to speak through him, Lord, tonight you speak, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let your presence, Lord, dwell in our hearts, Lord. I once again, Lord, the, submit the further time into your hands, Lord, that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path, Lord, that your word will convict the hearts of people. In the name of Jesus, I make this prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. And let's continue on the spirit of mammon. Last time I stopped on 2 Kings chapter number 20. 2 Kings <clears throat> chapter number 20. So there I was on the part of the sermon where I was I was teaching how how Babylon how Babylon uh, entered the church. Now some of the people think that if if really we want to live a godly life, we have to live a poor life and this and that. It's not like that. It's not like that. When I teach the sermon of Mammon, many people they are so afraid that they don't even want to come and listen to it because they think no 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 no. 
he will you know we, we have to live in in less and all those stuff no 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 it's not like that it's it's not like that what god i will i will come to the revelation of how to handle mammon and at the beginning of the sermon i told you that jesus allows us to handle mammon and if but but walking with god and detached from mammon i will come to those revelation but i am telling you as believers you have to understand that you are rich than the richest person on the face of the earth you are rich and Amen. you have to you have to reevaluate your perspective about richness believers have to reevaluate their perspective about about blessings about success success is not when you become the richest person of the earth and your 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 name comes on the magazine that's not that's not success if you want to study success in the kingdom of god you have to under, you have to study the servants of god's life in the bible and i will come to abraham and i will come to the secret of godly riches that will give you power even even the richest person on earth will be will have to bow down to the authority that you will carry it's like that so 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 don't get, don't reevaluate your perspective about the bible so many people run away. oh no 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 if i if i want to you know once i was working in the office and when i worked in the office i used to share the gospel with my friends and there were some antichrist people but i used to share the share the gospel even as god gave me opportunity so once at the at at, at the dinner table they were talking and questioning me about things and i was answering them and all those stuff and then then they they, they told me oh since since you chose to serve god and become a pastor or whatever you chose that um, so you have to just wear white you cannot uh, marry you cannot do this do that so people have that perspective about serving god and and not only unbelievers i have seen many believers having that perspective they think if god if 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 i will ask god for a for a for a girl or for a woman to marry god will give me the ugliest woman that is how they think god will give me this god will make me suffer if i will ask god for this god will give so so they do things by their own because they don't understand their bible everything that they have uh, cooked up in their perspective is is very very false and and most of them also fear teachings because some of them if they hear teachings like this it will it will it will start to break strongholds in them it will start to convict them it will start to pull them towards godliness so they are so afraid no 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 we don't, don't want to hear such teachings and all those things hallelujah are we understanding if you don't let the doctor operate you uh, no 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 i will not let the doctor how how will you get healed you will not get healed so you have to let the word of god the solid word of god operate you operate in you you have to let the solid word of god work in you so that so that it can remove everything that is not of god it it can break strongholds perspectives old mindsets carnal mindsets that are not of god any which ways let's move ahead in the sermon we were on second kings chapter number 20 hallelujah so let's let's begin from there i ended there but let's begin from where i ended so i was telling you about uh, king hezekiah he became sick and if you i read the chapter last time if you read your second kings chapter number 20 you will notice that it was the lord who allowed that sickness unto death but the bible says he humbled himself he went faced the wall and cried and humbled himself before the lord so isaiah the prophet was sent and then he said that you will be healed and god decided to add 15 more years that is because he he, he repented and then he said that after three days you will be allowed to go to the house of the lord that was the first characteristic of his sickness the sickness is not named there but we can estimate what kind of sickness he had from the scripture the first characteristic of the sickness hezekiah had was he was not allowed to go to the house of god 
I don't have time to go, but you, when you read Deuteronomy, read the Old Testament, that sickness was leprosy. If anyone is a leper, he is not allowed to enter the house of God. We will see other scriptures regarding that afterwards. Then the sick, and then it, it says that uh, fig leaves will be taken and, and it will be laid on his boil. So it was certain kind of skin disease and leprosy is a skin disease. But I want to... I want to ask a question to you. Why God allowed a sickness in Hezekiah? A praying king. A king that who trusted God. A king who depended on God. Such a kind of king. Why did God allow that kind of sickness unto death to come in his life? Because 2 Kings chapter number 20, verse number 12 says, He had relationships with Babylon. All right. 2 Kings chapter number 20. Let's start from there. 2 Kings chapter number 20, verse number 12, it says, He had relationships with Babylon. Let me read out verse number 12 onwards. At that time, Berodak Beladan, the son of Beladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah. And he heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah was attentive to them. So he was friends with this Berodak Beladan, with the agent of Babylon. And then he was attentive to them after he got healed. What he did? He showed them all the house of his treasures, the silver and gold, the spices and precious ointment, and all his armory. All that was found among his treasures. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. All right. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did this men say and from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said, They came from a far country, from a Babylon, from, from Babylon, from the country Babylon. Now listen to me. Who were these men? What did they say? From where did they come to you? Why is Isaiah speaking? Isaiah is not speaking on his own behalf. Isaiah came with the word of the Lord and God is speaking through Isaiah to Hezekiah. Who are these people? Where did they come from? M means I have no I have no will for you that you be co you be in contact with such kind of people. You be in fellowship with such kind of people. So what does that mean? Even if you are a praying person, you are dependent on God, but God is interested about the people you fellowship with, about the people you have relationships with, about the people you release your information to, about the people you release your secrets to. God is interested in that. Who were these people? Why did they came to you? They are not people that I... I ordained them to be in contact with you. Understand that God has ordained people that you should fellowship with. Hallelujah. And I, I told Psalm chapter number one, that, uh, if, you, if you read Psalm chapter number one, it does not say, starts with, blessed is the man who, who meditates on the law of God day and night. It does not start with that. Psalm chapter number one first starts with, blessed is the man who stands not in the counsel of the ungodly, not walks in the path of the sinner, not sits in the seats of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So before even going to the law, he, he sanctifies his contacts. He sanctifies the people he fellowships with. Are we understanding? God is really... God is really, he is interested that you are reading the word. Okay, that's good. But who, which are the people you are fellowshipping with? Has God ordained them to be with you? Or you are making up your contacts with these people? Any which ways. So what, what he did was important. What Hezekiah did was important. And that is how Babylon entered the house of God. Who opened the, who opened the gate for Babylon to enter the house of Judah? Hezekiah, the praying king, opened. How he opened, I will tell you. So, verse number 15 says, And he said, What they have seen in your house? So, Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. These, There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried 
to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. That is how Babylon came and captured everything that was in Judah. The house of God was in Judah. The house of Hezekiah, this is Judah and Israel separate. Uh, Israel was uh, captured by the Assyrians. Judah was captured by Babylon, technically all those things. But let us look at what was the error of Hezekiah. I ended on that last time and I will start off with, start off with that. Now listen to me. This is, this is the error of Hezekiah. King Hezekiah, a man of prayer, chose not to display his faith in God, his prayer life and testimonies to the heathen, but his wealth, treasuries, achievements, weapons to them. King Hezekiah, as a man of prayer, chose not to display his faith in God, his prayer life, his testimonies to the heathen, to the Babylonians, but he, he, he chose to display his wealth, his treasuries, the achievements, the weapons he had to them. And that is, that is the start of pride. Hallelujah. Are we together until now? That is the start of pride. He prayed and God, God drove out Sennacherib, the king, and, and did not let Sennacherib and his army come and destroy Judah. After all the threats that he gave, he could have shared that testimony about how Jehovah gave him victory to the heathen. He could have shared about his faith, about his prayer life, dependency on God, about Jehovah. But he chose not to display his faith and testimonies, but he chose to display his wealth. <coughs> he chose to display mammon. He chose to display the achievements and that is where he opened the gate for Babylon to come in. Have you not seen pastors talking? I, I told you last time I have seen pastors in America, not only in America nowadays, also now in India, in Africa. So there are men of God come there and said, one of the men of God said, if people, when people look at me, uh, 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 traveling in my Rolls Royce, then God will, the people will know that there is a God in heaven. Display of wealth, boasting about how much they have, boasting about, there is one, another preacher, he, he, he boasts about how much, how much billions and billions of dollars house he lives in. There is another preacher, I saw him showing his watch and he said, this is the, this is the, that is not preaching. That is not preaching. They are the. They have become the agents of Babylon. When you boast about mammon, you are opening. You are opening the gate. That means your. You know what does that means? That means their strength is not in the God of heaven. Their strength is in mammon. Their strength is in. That is the reason God was. God was killing Hezekiah. That is what I can say. That was the reason, but because he humbled himself and because he said, oh God, remember me, remember that I was loyal to you on the basis of some, of some covenants he made with the Lord and obedience, God forgave him and added more 15 years. But then after getting healed, he, he showed what, what he was, what was in his heart. He was displaying his achievements and not his faith, not his, not his uh, testimonies to the heathen and that opened a gate for Babylon to come in. Now Babylon, now let me start off with this. Babylon mammon is pride. Mammon is pride. Everyone say mammon is pride. <clears throat> mammon is pride. Mammon is pride. You have to understand that mammon has created systems. Maybe I will, this, this sermon, this series will be a a long series i'm telling you because i'm going to go to system that mammon created hallelujah if if there is a ministry and people are coming to the ministry and the ministry and 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 there is money coming in the, i'm telling you listen to me the presence of god is not required for money to continue to come in there is a system set up the presence of god has already left that because it, it is babylonized 
there is a system that is set up and when the system is set up money will continue to come in and that systems are created by mammon those systems are created by mammon it is based on pride it is based on transactions give and take you 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 give you will get this you give you will get this so people are 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 under a spell are you understanding that people are under a spell now no no listen to me how our mind operates how i how our mind operates let's say we go to a mall and and there is a branded shop let's say let's say there is a brand some 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 famous brand let's say nike okay and they have price tag price tags on their products shoes or clothes or whatever they have they have price tags there and and one shoe would cost five hundred dollar six hundred dollar whatever because it it is a brand and it promises you many things and it is established you will not even bargain you will not even think about you will pay whatever money is and you will buy it but let's say that there is there is a store which has not set up its system it's a raw store but the quality of the of the products and the material of the shoes or whatever they make is better than nike but it's not a system is not set up like nike there and when you go there even though you see the material and even though the price is less but still you will tell them no i want a lower price because you don't want to give to them you want to give to nike because it's a system are we understanding that there is a system that mammons sets up but i will not come to that that is for for a later part that that system remember in the in the book of revelation chapter number 13 it says that the beast the dragon it was the old serpent remember the old serpent how many heads did the did, did the old serpent has it was just a serpent one head but now it developed into a big dragon the serpent transform uh, you, you see the transformers how they from this they become big and all those stuff they, they got transformed the serpent got transformed and this serpent now is being developed into seven heads and ten horns that is a system that is a system that is set up the seven heads are 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 the system functionaries through which these people mammon mammon exploits and 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 sucks up money sucks up money sucks up money okay let's not go so so it's a system it's a system mammon is a system so even even though the the presence of god is not required prayer is not required just a system is set up i am telling you i have been with ministers who have got into systems they have set up systems and those systems are Babylonian systems based on the foundations of mammon. Hallelujah. But we are here to understand that mammon is pride. Babylon functions on pride. And when, when, when a child of God, when a representative of heaven who, is, who has a ministry is given unto pride, he opens the door for mammon and babylon to come in and start to rule over what god god ordained for him start to take over what god has given him are we understanding by the way the weaponries the treasures of his house all are given by god but when he opens the door for babylon babylon comes and captures it because of pride and then the speakings of pride will signify that this guy is an agent of babylon now hallelujah are we understanding babylon mammon is pride now i want to come back i want to come and tell you the definitions of pride the definitions of pride there are four definitions of pride for us to understand pride there are four how many four definitions of pride the first definition of pride is pride is stealing the glory that should go to god for your own self pride is stealing the glory i have purposely i first wrote taking then i cancelled it and i wrote stealing it's stealing the glory of god it does not belongs to you you have stolen it from god pride is stealing the glory from god for for your own self did we did we see, do we see this definition in what hezekiah did 
He did not give glory to God in front of the heathen. Hallelujah. Amen. How much ever God has blessed you with, but when a heathen comes and stands before you, testify to him not about what you don't testify to him oh you know what see my car lamborghini see my house see my this see my this oh yeah i have those things and you take out god from it that is pride you take out no mention of god in it you have to say all these things are not mine it's given by god today i have it tomorrow i don't know if you are but i will praise my god that is how a godly man functions i will come to that how to handle mammon how to handle mammon i will i will talk about that a, a life that is not attached to mammon it's not that god will not bless you don't get me don't get the get the perspective wrong god will bless you with the richest things of the earth and he will have you enjoy it but at the same time he will give you when you are detached from mammon like Apostle Paul says, I am content and happy when I have in abundance, but even when I have in lack, I, am, I have no problem. So in every situation, I am not attached to a lifestyle. I can live however God wants me to live. I am not attached to a certain house. You understand that? I am not attached to a certain buying a car. If I have it, praise God. If I don't have it, if I have a lesser one, if I don't have it, anything will do. That is a godly lifestyle. So, But pride, let me come back. The first definition of pride is stealing the glory that should go to God for your own self. Stealing the, the glory that should go to God for your own self. That is the reason Nebuchadnezzar became a madman for seven years. He was in the he, he was in the jungle, in the wilderness with animals. Because he said, is not this great Babylon that I have built for myself, for my own glory? The moment he said that he did not give glory to God, he fell down like a madman. And the Bible says his hairs grow grew <coughs> like animals hairs and his his nails grew grew like what eager whatever nails long nails seven years he did not cut his nail he was he went mad oh god okay hallelujah listen to me isaiah chapter number 42 let's read a scripture isaiah chapter number 42 <clears throat> verse number eight can someone read that i want someone to read that isaiah 42 verse number eight i am the lord that is my name and my glory will i not give to another neither my praise to graven images amen i am the lord that is my name and my glory i will not give to another the lord is god is very particular about that god is very particular about that you know there was a there was a young man who was suffering in the hospital and the doctor said he will die so someone called me and said you know please pray if 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 god does a miracle i said no problem i will pray for him and god said by evening he will die but I prayed and by the grace of God, he did not die. Again, the doctor said, ah, today he will die, you know. His condition is critical. Again, they, the, the mother called the person and then I prayed. He did not die. Like that, he survived a month or two. Okay. And another day came and the doctor said, he is again on ventilator. And he will, so he was not getting permanently healed. You know why? Because the mother was sharing God's glory with other religious gods. So that day when, 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 when the doctor said he will, the doctor said he will die in the morning. So they again called me and the, they are not Christians. They are non-Christians. They again called me. So I prayed and he did not die in the morning. Okay, he did not die. But by evening, by four o'clock in the evening, uh, four or five in the evening, the news came that he, he passed away. I, I said, okay, whatever has happened. But the next day, I got the information that after I prayed, the mother brought a Muslim imam to the hospital. And then, after the Muslim imam came to the hospital, the Muslim imam came to his bedside by, by 11 in the morning, after I prayed in the morning, 11 uh, to, his, to his bedside. <clears throat> 
and the Muslim Iman threw some water or whatever he did some ritual and said he will you know he will live after that happened he died and then then the Holy Spirit immediately spoke this verse to me and it's he told me I am the Lord that is my name I will not share my glory with another and then I understood what the Lord was trying to tell me I prayed and he got healed but the mother was going to give the testimony that even the Muslims prayed, even the Hindus prayed. God will not share his glory. The very breath of his nostril was in my God's hand because he is the only true and living God. God will not share. That's why when I pray for Hindus here in India, I tell them, I am praying for you. God will heal you. But after I pray for you, you will go to your temple. And then you, if you if you try the, to share the glory of my Jesus, it is not going to work. Sometimes something worse may happen to you. People, listen to me. I am in ministry. I know how people, even Christians, they, they want to find many ways. Ah, I trust God, but let me keep other options also. No, brother. Let me keep other options also. That is not how. If you trust God, only trust God. And when He does it for you, give all glory to Him. Your healing will be maintained. Amen. Hallelujah. Many people lose their healing, not because the man of God is not anointed, because you after that share the glory. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yes, uh, you know, Jesus healed me, but also those people also prayed in the temple. So, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. You will lose it. You will lose it because he is God. He will not share. Stealing, stealing his glory is pride. Are we understanding that? Stealing his glory. All glory shall go to you. Even this cloth I wear, the hairs I have in my head, the way I look, I should give glory to God. It is God who has made me beautiful. It is God who has clothed me with beauty. It is all about God. God has did it. Hallelujah. A godly man, even if he buys a, a, a five dollar, a two dollar ice cream, he will he will first God thank you for this. Even though he has millions of thank you for this. You have allowed me to have the ice cream. You have allowed me to have this food. There is a gratefulness in their hearts. Hallelujah. But mammon, those who operate in mammon and all, they are full of pride and arrogance. We will see the book of Timothy. It talks about it. Apostle Paul says, Command those who are rich in the world, don't be proud and arrogant. Because richness is all, mammon is all, always connected with arrogance, pride, 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 pride. Pride is stealing the glory away from God. <coughs> that is the nature of God. Hallelujah. Are we understanding that? He should get all the glory. Second definition of pride. Okay, let's go. Second definition of pride. Pride is boasting in mammon, material wealth and physical strength. Material wealth, physical strength, and self-achievements. Let me come again. Pride is boasting in mammon, material wealth, physical strength, and self-achievements. We already saw that in, um, in Hezekiah's life. Okay, let me give you some more scriptures. Daniel chapter number 4. <clears throat> Daniel chapter number 4, verse number 29. <clears throat> Daniel chapter number four, verse number. <clears throat> yeah. Could you just read the the last part of that? Uh, the definition. The physical strength. Yes. Yes. Pride is boasting in mammon, material wealth, physical strength, and self achievements. Self achievements. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh -huh. So, yeah, let's come to Daniel chapter number 4, verse number 29. <clears throat> At the end of the 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. The day you start to boast in your own strength, in your own, own power, in your own glory, 
the presence of God leaves you because pride is something that made Lucifer fall uh, from heaven. I want to raise above the, I want to rise above the stars of God. I want to make my throne above the throne of God. That was that was the mentality. That was the sin that made him fall along with trading along with trading because when you when you act and operate in pride you op you start to trade you you place a value on anything everything you place a value on people have you noticed if you are a christian from a long time and if you have been in ministries and in churches there are pastors who don't treat the people of god as the sheep of god but they have a tag on everyone they have a tag on everyone the benefit that they can get out of people and the 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 the, the more a person benefits the more the 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 nicely the more nicely they will they will treat that person because i am telling you there is mammon in that in that pastor he is ruled by the spirit of mammon because when you operate in mammon and pride, you will you will put a price tag on everything. You will put a value on anything. If this benefits, I will I will do more for this person. If this does not benefits, I will not do here. I will not do that. So you put a value on, on everything and anything. All right. So so king of Babylon, that is Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter number four fell because he started to boast in his glory he started to boast in his mammon in his material wealth in his physical strength in his achievements another example from the book of acts chapter number 12. <coughs> acts chapter number 12. and Verse number 21 to 24. Acts chapter number 12. Verse number 21 to 24. So on a day, on a set day, Herod arrayed in royal app apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, The voice of God and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. The first definition and he died was uh, and he was eaten by worms and died but the word of god grew and multiplied in the mighty name of jesus we prophesy that this is what will happen the agents of mammon will be struck down but the word of god will continue to prevail in the mighty name of jesus christ herod standing there gave a oration of his own own strength and all those stuff and and the way that he was speaking he was speaking like god himself taking glory for himself that's why the people shou shouted the voice of god and not of a man and when herod took the glory he was killed by god he was killed by the angel of god hallelujah do we see that another example jeremiah chapter number 9 verse 23 and 24 jeremiah chapter number 9 hmm. Jeremiah chapter number 9, verse number 23 and 24. Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. That is the commandment for us, how to get rid of pr pride. Let not the wise man glory in the wisdom. Oh, I have wisdom, I know this, I know that. And let not the mighty man glory in the might. Let, Lord, let not the rich man glory in the riches. But if you want to glory in something, have glory in the Lord, that you understand the Lord's ways. <clears throat> and glory in the Lord himself, that he exercises loving kindness and judgment and righteousness on the earth hallelujah that is how you get rid of pride so that is the second definition of pride let's come to the third definition of pride third definition of pride very important pride focuses on you exalting you benefiting you 
magnifying you etc pride focuses on on you you will get this it means you means i it focuses on i i will get this i will be benefit that is pride when you start to focus on you yourself alone on your things on your 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 ownership on this and that so pride focuses on you exalting you benefiting you magnifying you etc that is how the serpent wants to enter people that is how mammon wants to enter people now if you study mammon i will come to later mammon is the is lucifer himself that is that is one of the that is one of the versions he has he he, he is lucifer himself because when we read genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 5 he he deceived eve by making eve focus on herself what she can become and what she can get and when she started to focus on herself she lost it she 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 disobeyed god hallelujah remember in the book of luke chapter number 4 where the where the devil came and tempted jesus it was all about making jesus focus on himself if you are the son of god prove yourself turn the stone into bread and if you know all those things that he did and and the, if 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 you want all these kingdoms and authorities that is there i will give to you it will be yours it will be yours so it focuses on you you i will give it to you i will give it to you so that is pride when thoughts come it should be mine you know that's why i never say in my ministry my anointing be under my anointing you have those who know me from years they would have never heard me saying be under my anointing even if people tell and for whatever rhyme and reason they want oh you know what i don't want to come i said okay that's okay and i don't even bother them after that don't even bother them after that i i will not threaten them my anointing this even though they are leaving because of not valid reasons i will not bother them i will leave them to god because it's not my anointing it's not my ministry it's god's ministry so i let god do the operations and activities in the ministry if god that that night i was praying and then i came on case meeting and i shared a word you know because i was thinking something but when god answered me i understood it so this platform is a surrendered platform god does whatever he wants he keeps he he removes he allows things so it's god's it's not mine are we understanding that it's not mine so many ministers one of the minister of the gospel i was with he always used to tell you have to be under my anointing you have to be under my anointing after a point of time i i i got pissed off because i felt the controlling spirits i felt the dominating spirit my anointing my hey man you are not, you are a servant of god you are a leader above me i respect that but it's not yours anointing okay understand that it's not yours anointing it's not your ministry it is given to you by god so don't don't take the ownership that is what mammon does it focuses on you it makes you focus on you are we understanding my ministry my church my sheep i have seen oh they are my sheep they cannot go there they cannot go here they cannot they, that is pride that is mammon my sheep how can they be your ships i have studied my bible there is no apostle or no pastor in the bible no evangelist in the bible which said they are my sheep my sheep i never say that people who know me talk to me pray with me you will never hear me say it's my i will always say it's god's sheep why because that is there in the scripture remember when jesus spoke to peter what did he said to Peter in the last chapters of John, the Gospel of John, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. Take care of my sheep. He did not say, take care of the sheep I give. No, my sheep, Jesus said. He, it's his. It's his. It's his. Though a pastor is deemed as shepherd in the pastoral books you read, but the pastor is not a chief shepherd. The sheep don't belong to him. The chief, the 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 sheep belong to the chief shepherd. They are just managerial shepherds that they are managing. It's not your sheep, okay? It's not my sheep. It's Jesus's sheep. Then again, he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Yes, Lord, I love you. And then he said, Feed my sheep, tend my lambs, and all those stuff. So that is the scripture. When you read scripture, you will have better 
understanding. It's never my sheep. It's God's sheep. Are we understanding that? Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, get rid of pride. It will always focus on you. Benefit you. Bring you in the limelight. That is pride. That is, that is pride. Where, where you start to say, this is mine. This is mine. They are mine. Money is mine. This is mine. I will not leave this. I will not leave that. It is mine. It belongs to me. No, 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 no. That language, that means pride has entered you. All right. <clears throat> Genesis chapter number 3, verse number 5. Let us read that. That is how the devil brings pride in people. Genesis chapter number 3, <clears throat> verse number 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, this is the serpent speaking to Eve. You eat of it, your your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. So it was she, she, she. That is, that is how Mammon wants to make a deal with you. When Mammon comes to make a deal with you, he is, the, I am telling you, this is the truth. He is the best salesman. He is the best salesman. You know, salesman will tell you the, about the product, how it will benefit, or if they sell an investment plan, how you will earn money, how you will be rich, how you, 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 you. That is a salesman. Okay? We are not salesmen. Or even Jesus is not a salesman. The Bible says what we are, we are ambassadors for Christ. There is a difference. That's why we don't evangelize like a salesman. We evangelize like an ambassadors. You will see a lot of many evangelists in India nowadays, are pastors in India who even have mega churches. You know what they are? They are salesmen. They are salesmen. Come, to, You will see the gospel manipulated, watered down to your shock. Come to Jesus, you will get the car. Come to Jesus, you will get what you are praying for. Come to Jesus. That is selling Jesus. That they are agents of Babylon. Though they sound Christian, though they sound bib not biblical, though they sound like they are preaching, evangelizing, going, you know, you know what Jesus will do. I never tell people, come to Jesus, he will fulfill all that is in your heart. Or you want I will never preach the gospel like that. I will never, because I am an ambassador. If you see, if you see what happened to John the Baptist, where he was in the wilderness, people came to him because. You should know that you have the original God and all other gods are fake. You should be convicted about that fact. And if you have the original God, people will be drawn to you. People will be drawn to your lifestyle. People will be drawn to your faith. You don't have to sell Jesus to people. People will be drawn to your lifestyle. People will be drawn to the faith you have in God. People will be drawn the way you walk with God. The way you handle money. The way you do business. The way you, the way you are in the office. The way you work. People will be drawn. Hallelujah. I am telling Amen. you. Hallelujah. My sister. It's... Don't, May you not take this as a boast. My sister joined a new company, but she has been she is esteemed in the company by the US clients, by the owner of the company, all of them. It's not because of her, it's because of the principle she works in. It's because of the principle she has. It's because of the revelation she walks in, that she has been respected by everyone. Are we understanding? Be that that is that is how when you live in uh, truly Christians when they understand the revelation of of God's word and they truly live in submission to God, live a lifestyle of faith. You become an ambassador, and and until now she has almost not missed one person telling about Jesus in the organization she goes to, not selling Jesus. But people coming to her to ask about Jesus. People coming to her to ask about her faith. She, she, she is not selling Jesus. Oh, I, you know what, my Lord Jesus, anyone wants uh, increment promotion, believe in my Lord. He will. No, 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 no. That is how, how they are doing uh, uh, right now. They are selling Jesus. They are selling Jesus. It's an act of, act, act of Babylon. But you know what? <clears throat> you don't have to sell Jesus. It's, it's ambassador. We are ambassadors. So what devil does is, what mammon does is, it sells itself to you. And for selling itself to you, they start to gratify your flesh, gratify your ego, gratify, you know, 
the fleshy things in you you will get this this benefit they will they will they will massage your ego massage your flesh and that is what a salesman does that is what a salesman does you know when i, I once i went to this is how salesmen they, they tell a lot of lies flattering it it is said once i went to buy something for my mother and i went there i selected a dress for her and the salesman is saying to me there in the store sir are, are you a doctor are you an engineer i said no 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 i'm not a doctor no 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 i am asking because the choice you made you 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 seem to be a very very a uh, rich man very wise man the way he was flattering to me so that i buy the product you know the cho the choice you make a very good salesman <laughs> hallelujah people are we there amen hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, i know hallelujah. sister petonia is there i know she what about other people uh, say amen if you are there hallelujah amen 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 amen, amen. 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 flattery is what mammon will use flattery is what mammon whenever i see a, a pastor or whatever flattering i stay away no 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 yeah 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 whatever you think about me i uh, stay away whenever flattery is what they will use self satisfaction ego massage that salesman said are you an engineer are you a doctor no 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 because the way you chose the dress for your mother you seem to be like a very rich man your choice is great this and that nonsense <laughs> all lies <laughs> because he wants to sell something he wants to trade he wants to give his cloth and take something from me that is my money that is how mammon though the mammon will flatter you to death flatter you something it's because mammon wants to trade with you mammon wants to trade with you and the way oh my god this uh, this is what i will take with from mammon but what he will take in return is your soul uh, we will come to that trading 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 that is how the system of mammon is built trading 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 many churches are working working not with god they are working with mammon and the ideologies of the world to make that church as a feel good place for people that when they sit on the chair and listen to those things they are hypnotized to write a check and give it to them i'm telling you but I, that is not giving giving is different hallelujah given giving is when god pierces your heart and you understand the revelation ah lord and some people are nowadays coming on instagram they are coming on facebook and they are saying oh what what this much we have to give in god's kingdom that much you have to give in god's kingdom these christians are talking like they are giving to god and some some christian commented there oh if god is all christian is commenting if god is all powerful and all 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 knowing why does he wants our money bro 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 listen it's not your money the salary you are earning 100% belongs to god but what he is asking from you is just a part of it that is the attitude you should have while giving you don't give to god in your ego you don't give to god in your in your um, in your pride that is not accepted you when you give to god you the attitude is father everything i have even every penny i have it is yours it is all yours i want to thank you that you have let me you see god is grateful he has let you use 90% and asking you 10% now there is another another speaking and controversy 10% tithe is not in the new testament i have already taken sermons on that i don't have time now tithing is a is a new testament revelation tithing started not in the law of moses it started when melchizedek came from from salem that is the heaven third heaven and abraham gave him a tithe of all when we give unto the lord we are telling god lord everything i have belongs to you and i am cheerfully giving you A any which ways listen to me listen to me hallelujah pride focuses on you even when proud people give there are proud people who give they will remember what they gave though you don't remember what you gave that's why jesus appreciated that widow who gave two mites it's not about the amount beloved it's about your heart hallelujah it's about 
Once you give to the Lord, I have to tell some people in the group about, once you give to the Lord, you forget, you don't keep an account of it. I mean, I am I'm, I'm in ministry, but I give to other ministry and I don't keep an account. I don't even remember how much, how much, how much, how much I, I gave because I have given. It's a surrender. You understand? Remember surrender? I, I preached that sermon. Give is surrender. Surrender. You Lord, you know what? Last month I gave you so much, but this month you did not answer my prayer. What? What? That is not giving. That is not giving. There is pride in you. There is mammon in you. You have to understand that. That is, that is mammon. Because you are trying to establish a transactional relationship with God. That is not a relationship with God. Are we understanding that? Pride will focus on you. How much you gave, how much I did, how much I... You will always weigh what you did for God with what you received from God. Are you like that? Get rid of it. You have pride. You have pride. You, I, I told you one statement. God does not owe us anything. He owes us nothing. Because he has already given his son on the cross to die for us. That's all. He gave his life. That is all that is needed. He has given us. It's our time to give unto the Lord. But if I am vain, I prayed this much, I fasted this much, I gave this much. After that, what I receive from God, that is pride, that is mammon ruling my mind. Hallelujah. Are we understanding the definition, the third one? Pride focuses on you. You will always think about what you did for God. How much you fasted, how much you prayed, what you did. It focuses on you. It exalts you, benefits you, it flatters you, magnifies you, okay? But on the contrary, humility focuses on God and not you. Humil that is the true meaning of humility. It's all about God. It's yours, God. This, this is your God. This, this is your God. That is what Job was, a humble person. What did he say? He was a rich man once, but everything was taken away. Away. What did he say? The Lord gave once today, and now the Lord took away. But blessed be his name. Wow. No wonder God made him rich again. No wonder I'm telling you. God made the man rich again. If you are a humble person, you will walk and live in the richness of God. You will walk in the prosperity of God. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Humility focuses on God and not on you let me give you one scripture about that solomon was once a humble humble man in the book of first kings chapter 3 that's why he became rich he was humble that's why he became rich in the book of first kings chapter number 3 first kings chapter number 3 Verse number 5 to 10. First Kings <coughs> chapter number 3, verse number 5 to 10. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, Now see, I like this prayer. Solomon said, You have shown great mercy on your servant David my father because he walked before you in truth in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you you have continued this great kindness for him and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day now O lord my god you have made your servant king instead of my father David but I am a little child I do not know how to go out or come in and your servant is in the midst of your people. Not my people. Your people. Hallelujah. Your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen. A great people too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people. That I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? This speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Wow, that's a speech, that's a prayer of humility. 
that's a prayer of humility when you when that is the prayer you are doing with your see how many times he's doing you 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 yours 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 your people your nation your servant david my father i am your servant this great people of yours everything is yours that is how you keep yourself away from mammon it's all yours you decided to keep me i will be there if you decided to remove me i will be out it's all your decision hallelujah that is humility no wonder solomon became one of the wealthiest man that the world has ever seen in history hallelujah more richer than um what's his name tesla owner more richer more richer than him more richer than bill gates solomon because he got rich by god he got rich by his humility that is before god i'm telling you hallelujah when you have that kind of humility you will walk in the richness you will walk in the prosperity of god okay that was the third definition of pride the fourth definition of pride is pride puts its trust and hope in mammon and not god a proud person will always run to mammon when there is a calamity a proud person will always run to the system of mammon when there is a problem it will put its hope a spirit of pride will put its hope and trust in mammon and never in god hallelujah do we understand that first timothy chapter number 6 verse number 17 someone read that word for me first timothy chapter number 6 Verse number 17. First Timothy 6, 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Amen. 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 You see that? What is saying there? Command those who are rich in the present age, in this present age, not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches. Riches are uncertain. Mammon is uncertain. But in the living God. Hallelujah. So he is talking about Christians. If a Christian is rich, uh -huh, wait there, be humble. Do, okay, you are rich, praise God, but don't trust your, don't put your trust and hope in the money you have. Do we understand that? Put your trust. So pride makes a person to trust and hope in mammon, in the material wealth, okay, in money. So, and when that happens, when people become rich, when people become rich, many people have fallen away because of that. That first Timothy chapter number six, I read just one verse. I'm going to go into that when I come to the further revelations of mammon, okay? But it says, so these are the four definitions of mammon. The first one I told you pride, uh, sorry, these are the four definition of pride. The first one I told you that pride is stealing the glory that should go to God for your own self. Pride is boasting in mammon, material wealth, physical strength, and self-achievements. Third, I told you, pride focuses on you, exalts you, flatters you, magnifies you, etc. But humility focuses on God and not you. Uh, fourth, I told you, pride puts its hope and trust in mammon and not God. Okay? So, by this you understand pride. Many people are saying, no, 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 I am not pride. I am humble because I go to, I am humble to people. No, humility to people is fake. Humility, I am telling you, humility only towards people is fake. You know, sir, I was going to the church and some people in my church used to, when they came in the church, they used to come like this. Praise the Lord, brother. They used to lower down the shoulder, lower down the, praise the Lord, brother. Oh, he is humble. No, humility is not 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 detected by the way they they put their posture of they are bowing down to you they are saying praise the lord with a soft voice 
like softer than your pillow that is not humility humility when is when there is no pride in you okay hallelujah there is no these things are in you you might go and say praise the lord like this and you can be humble i'm telling you you don't have to mellow down and bow down and make a soft voice and all those stuff nonsense that is what oh that is and, and, the, and the church pastor oh that is a humble brother oh he does not speak much he does not oh when people don't want to come on the stage and whatever oh they are humble that's why they don't want to come on the stage what nonsense who told that that is humility humility is doing what god if god wants you to come on the stage and lead worship humility but you are saying no i don't want to come you see moses did not wanted to go and minister God was and God got angry at him. Many people say, Oh, Moses was humble. He was not humble. He was ignorant. That's why God will not get angry on a humble person. It says God was angry with him. He said, Enough, I will send your brother Aaron. So understand what is true humility. Okay. Many churches and pastors are. Are, are pondering on the false definition oh that person never comes on the stage he's all he when he comes he always sits on the back chairs of the church he's at the back of the church he does not want to come because he is humble nonsense he's not humble he's lazy he 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 is lazy he's ignorant he does not want to serve god okay <laughs> hallelujah are we understanding humility is when i when there is no pride in you the four definitions i told you when there is no pride in you and pride is very closely connected to riches of the world it's very closely it's pride is mammon pride is babylon but tonight we expose it and tonight we break the yoke of pride from our lives in jesus name hallelujah i will i will continue the next is the spiritual leprosy that comes through pride but i will not start it off now i will start it off on sunday night the spiritual leprosy that comes through pride all right let's pray and we will go to the spiritual leprosy on sunday night hallelujah father we want to thank you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah we come approach your throne of grace i want to thank you for your presence lord i am privileged to be your to teach your word to your sheep, father and to be in your presence lord hallelujah i am lord better is one day in your courts than thousand days elsewhere in the world yes in your courts better is is to be a gatekeeper as the in the house of the lord than to dwell outside in the tents of wickedness it's better for me to be a gatekeeper just just keep the gates and the doors of the house hallelujah my delight is in that hallelujah father i give you the praise I give you the honor. I give you the glory, Father. I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you. I just want to worship your holy name. Magnify your holy name. Lift up your holy name. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, everything of mammon, especially the pride. Lord, if there is any pride by the word that has been released, Lord, right now and even when it goes online, Father, let every pride be exposed. Let your people be delivered from pride out of the hold of mammon in the name of jesus christ deliver your people in the name of jesus christ lord i give you the glory lord i magnify your holy name lord i lift your holy name holy name on high father